We're on the air, guys. Hello, hello. And I'm a little... Hi, everyone. <laughs> Bonjour à tous. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, I think I think we're on, but we're maybe a little bit... Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. Too, we're gonna, too we're, zoomed in. <laughs> we're okay. I'm okay. fixing everything in the oh, back <laughs> in real time here. All right, so. Oh, wow. Technology is, 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 yeah. a, is a beast. Um, is our friend, but sometimes not. <laughs> But think about it, you know, just barely three, four years ago, uh, this kind of streaming live on, on two, three platforms at the same time was not so accessible. I mean, only the experts of the experts can do it. But today, it's, you know, it, the barrier has come down enough for even, you know, somebody like me can <laughs> kind of do it. <laughs> but it's still pretty, it's still pretty hard. But uh Hey, it works. <laughs> it, it works. works. <laughs> it works. So uh, again, greetings to everybody. You know, happy Friday, TGIF, uh, in proper terms. Uh, <laughs> today we have James Carl. Uh, James was on our on our show uh, uh, a few months back, before he was actually selected as a speaker. Today we are reintroducing him uh, as a speaker for uh, at Langfest uh, 2019. So. Hello, James. How you doing, Tatsu? How you doing, Nicholas? Pleasure to be here. Thank you once again for inviting me to come on. Well, it's great to have you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, you're uh, a man of first because I think last time you talked a little bit, maybe you're going to, uh, you know, uh, tell us again, you know, for, for the new audience that uh, you were, uh, I think, the only student or slash youngest speaker at a language teacher's conference. I, I, I'm not sure. I, are you, are you going to be Langfest's youngest speaker this year? Maybe not. Maybe. Well, um, I mean, James, how old are you? Probably, right? right so it's another first. I'm 16 right now, yeah. Oh, wow. okay, yeah. 16 years old. What was I doing even, when I was 16? Even George, <laughs> I think. Uh, oh, no, that's not, that's not true. Ronnie uh, was. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We, we've had Ronnie and Bella. And and Bella. And actually, okay. yeah, I, I mean, can't forget her. Te technically, okay, the youngest speaker because... not to present with uh, his or her parents <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and and I think um, George Awad. Uh, so so James, uh, but he was seventeen the first I, year. I think so. I mean, how old is he today? He's he's, he's nineteen like or twenty one. Oh, really? Okay, twenty, yeah. maybe yeah. twenty. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so, I, but, but but still. <laughs> You know, uh, if yeah. you're in your teens and, and you're, you've already had, you know, a few languages under your belt and you're, you're and motivated. And presentations at language uh, conferences, it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, James, tell us about, about your experience at, uh, at, at that language conference, which at New York, um, some teachers, some, some teachers conference. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a very famous yeah. one that I don't know of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that journey really started in 2016 when I went with my aunt to, um, and it's called NICE, called the New York State Association of Foreign Language Teachers uh, mm -hmm. Annual Conference. And there, wow. uh, I wasn't a speaker, but I was just going with my aunt to uh, get inspired by different teachers throughout New York State and uh, get certain ideas and bring my perspective as an independent language learner uh, to some of these teachers. And I was so inspired by this, uh, by by this conference that the following spring I applied to become a speaker <laughs> and the topic there was say goodbye to shy a student perspective in the classroom and that was accepted and after a few weeks of waiting because we weren't actually sure if a student could present at this conference mm -hmm. uh, I was accepted as a speaker and from there I gave my perspective on how I learn languages and how uh, kids would like to see language classrooms run and a few different activities that they suggest as well as some of my own uh, to enhance their learning and uh, speaking abilities and uh, opportunities within the classroom. That's okay. great. I mean, before before we go in any deeper, I do want to take a, a minute to acknowledge the folks that are on the, that are on our live stream right now. We have Tessa. Tessa has been uh, watching our streams uh, closely these these past few uh, weeks. And uh, also Miguel, Miguel, uh, he has been at our uh, event pretty much every year since the beginning. He's also a very gifted uh, language learner himself. Uh, travels the world, so uh, I don't know where you are, Miguel. If, I, if you're back in New York, uh, welcome back to this side of the 
the Atlantic. Uh, and so, yes, so back to you, uh, James. Uh, I do want to mention, you know, the, how I, I think, James, you go in, you're, you're like a go-getter. You, you talk to folks and you, you change the rules. You, <clears throat> you're like a first in, in, uh, as a student presenting at a teacher's conference. Uh, and you also talked to me about your project right now uh, with a professor at Syracuse University. I do want to remind our, our audience that James is a high school student. So I, I did ask why he's uh, working with the university professor. And, and what was the response? I just called him up. <laughs> that's, Sometimes, well, that's, you know, it, that's it just great. works like that. You know, it's just, that's, um... that's exactly how, how I think, you know, go-getters work. They, they go out and, and they knock on doors. And uh, he... James knocked on Langfest's door, and uh, and we opened gladly. Mm-hmm. Hope you can come in and and, and do a first at, at Langfest. <laughs> yeah. So, what what exactly uh, are you going to talk about at Langfest? It would be something along the lines of uh, what you told the, the teachers, or will you uh, maybe adapt a little bit because it's a different audience? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you have in mind? Yeah. So my presentation is called Bridging the Gap between language learners and academia. And this is almost like the inverse of my presentation at, at the NiceFelt Annual Conference. Whereas at NiceFelt, I was bringing uh, people from academia, the perspective of the independent language learner. At Langfest, I'm gonna be bringing the perspective of academia and professors and teachers to the independent language learners. And I'm really fortunate since I have both sides. I have learned Italian on my own, I do have on my own blog where I outline my methods for learning languages. I still do take a French and a Spanish course at my high school. And there are things that I implement from my school into my independent language learning. And I would really like for independent language learners to incorporate those into their, into their learning. One of the examples that I'm gonna bring up is learning prefixes and suffixes uh, very early on in the language learning process. This is really stress in my high school, and I really love it when I'm doing uh, language learning at my home, because if you can learn certain prefixes and certain suffixes, you can learn hundreds of vocabulary words right off the bat without even touching any actual words with the prefixes and suffixes. You know, that's uh, exactly, uh, as a side note, uh, why uh, acquiring vocabulary in Esperanto, which I speak, is so <laughs> is so easy because there's tons of uh, suffixes and, and prefixes that are uh, are very productive. Meaning you can combine them with any words. But it's true that you know, with many languages, you you do have this uh, this sort of mechanics that you can uh, use as well to, uh, to to some extent. But it's uh, it's interesting that, uh, that 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 you mentioned that as a as a particular way to extend your vocabulary. Uh, uh, because it's uh, it's true. I mean, it's uh, it's a way that you can use the mechanics of the language to extend uh, your reach, so to speak, um, in a cheap way. Like you know, the relatively few elements could you know take you pretty far. Yeah, exactly. Well, <clears throat> speaking speaking of like Esperanto, uh, perhaps this is not a coincidence that that James talks about the prefixes and, and suffixes. There is this. Does this have to do with your your Esperanto studies? I mean, you, you did mention you're interested. I don't know if you already started or if you're going to start. Uh, um, I, was, I wasn't actually aware of the prefixes and suffixes in Esperanto, but I thought it would be an easy language to pick up before Langfest to, uh, to put another one under my belt to I speak to okay. you already. So <laughs> I can just connect with the Esperanto community and uh, language learners on an even wider basis. Um, but that's a, really, that's a really cool element. I didn't know about that. That would be really neat to discover some of the patterns and the rules uh, of that language. Okay. So, so speaking of the academic world and the language, um, independent language learners, uh, would you say that most of the thoughts on both sides are complementary? Or are they opposing? Or is one side really like sort of looking down on the other side? Or what do, you, what do you think is the, I mean, I don't know the academic side uh, at all. I mean, yeah, I mean, hell, I, I don't really know the independent side that well either. I mean, I did learn Spanish 
on my own, but uh, otherwise, uh, you know, most of my languages were learned when I was a young young kid and, and living growing up in Taiwan. So, you know, not not putting myself as an expert in in uh, neither side, but what what do you what do you think? I think that both sides are complementary. Obviously, both okay. have the end goal of being able to speak the language, read and write the language proficiently. Uh, and there's actually been a lot of studies done on the academic side um, supporting independent language learning methods. Uh, I went to the Syracuse University <laughs> Library a few weeks ago. I checked out a few books where well, people still go to libraries. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know it was a big, it was a big, beautiful library. You know. It was, <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! Well, I mean, independent learning is also a, a big trend in the language community, right? I mean, you see things such as uh, language mentoring. So, uh, uh, for instance, as is done by uh, Lydia Makhova, you know, it's it's a big thing. Uh, but you know, uh, the other people, you know, who have really emphasized uh, the uh, the way the way to go to them is to teach people how to learn and uh, not necessarily teach uh, at least for people in that uh, within that that that, that trend uh, it allows them also to touch learners of you know all languages uh, not learners of a specific language so uh, mm -hmm. I, definitely it's uh, i think something that has a, a very a very big reach because it's, it's not language specific mm -hmm. Yeah, most, and some of the books that I checked out, they actually dealt with um, another very popular way to learn language, learning on online platforms such as iTalk. Um, and it validated many of the things that independent language learners believe is that one on one uh, time with a teacher of a native language is practicing, even if not everything is 100% correct, just practicing the language back and forth with someone else is actually beneficial uh, to the students. In fact, at Dartmouth University, um, they're whole language learning method and approach is centered around conversation and being okay with making mistakes, but uh, eventually <clears throat> out making conversation with the professor and he won't criticize you for every single mistake uh, that this method is making its way uh, throughout universities, throughout the United States and throughout the world. Uh, and I believe that that is uh, beneficial for not only people in academia, but also for people in the independent language learning field who are seeing that their ways of learning the language are validated and appreciated by the wider community. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very glad that, uh, that you said that both sides have views that are complementary. And, you know, if we, if we look at it, if we zoom out a little bit, uh, I really think that <clears throat> we're all different. I mean, everybody learns, you know, they have their personal styles, they have their personalities, they have their likings. Uh, so there's really no reason for there to be one, you know, universal method or one size fits all. Uh, and I do see in the comments that uh, we have Tessa, you know, uh, mentioning that learning how to learn, which uh, Nicola mentioned earlier with Lydia, uh, uh, is is really what is crucial. Is is knowing what you like and how you learn, and and then learn how to extract uh, the information uh, your way. So you have to find out what is your method. And and <clears throat> and folks like Lydia. Uh, with her language mentoring, I think is, is is precisely that kind of thing, rather than teaching you grammar or, or teaching you uh, exactly what method you should use. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I do feel that maybe uh, some language specific teaching is useful, especially if you're learning uh, a language that's close to uh, to your own language. That's uh, I think one of the, uh, the aspects where it could be uh, it could be very good, very productive to to also have some. Uh, so just very specific information being given, especially for comprehension. Uh, but uh, but yeah, other than that, I think a lot of people now, I mean, they, they've learned how to teach themselves. So is that basically uh, what your project with this uh, college professor that, that you were talking about uh, is about? Uh, is, is, is it about independent learning? Is it about uh, the classroom setting? Well, what's it about? Yeah, so our study is gonna revolve around high school students, uh, high school students who are taking Spanish by the highest level of uh, Spanish offered within our uh, school district. And we're gonna be going through uh, idiom usage uh, okay. with those uh, within their group. So for example, they're gonna be presented a list of 30 idioms. Half of them will be uh, what we would call visual idioms, a picture in your mind, and then half of them will be non-visual. And then what we're gonna do with th those is have them look at the list for a set amount of time, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 
and then see what their recall is mm. after uh, after that set amount of time. Uh, I believe that this will help. This once again will help complement the independent language learning community because our hypothesis is that the more visual idioms will now be retained better, but then also used in uh, a simulated conversation where we have four speaking tasks. And we're hoping that the more visual idioms are used more frequently, so that will bolster our hypothesis. And this could be spread to the wider language learning community. Instead of spending time memorizing uh, idioms that you might not necessarily remember because they're not visual and you have a hard time with them, just stick to the visual idioms that you can have a picture of inside your head, uh, memorize those, and you're going to be able to use those more in conversation and appear more at ease with the language with whoever you speak with. Is is that the kind of thing that uh, that you, the kind of study that you'd be interested in doing, uh, maybe beyond high school? I mean, so you, you I see that you're already involved in some uh, some scientific uh, investigations. So what's uh, would you go into uh, uh, you know language education uh, after high school uh, in college or something like that? Is that something that you're interested in? Uh, it's definitely possible. I mean, I think I think. The one thing I like about language is that anything is open. If you speak another foreign language, there's so many fields open to you. Even if you pair it with a thing uh, such as law or medicine, there are so many careers available. Um, right now, I'm looking at international law, immigration, law, diplomacy, um, but I'm definitely open to doing, I will definitely yeah. do research in, uh, in college because I will be taking at least some linguistic classes, some language classes. Yeah. Um, so I hope to partner up with a professor, do more research like this that will help uh, the independent language learning, learning yeah. community all over the world. Yeah, it's good. I, I think, you know, uh, a, a driving point, a driving, a driving force behind where, where you want to go would be, do you love learning and using your languages? Or do you love learning about the languages? Um, which way do you think, which, which one is more uh, attractive to you? For me, uh, I don't know if I can choose Tetsu. <laughs> it's hard to choose. <laughs> it's always hard to choose. <laughs> I mean, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to take both sides of it. But I love connecting with other cultures and meeting other people, maybe two, maybe honing in on the two or three, four languages that I might already speak. But then also, I would love to uh, see others reach their full potential within their language learning capabilities because anybody can learn a foreign language. You know, I tell that to people all the time. They say, how do you do it? I said, it just takes a lot of study, a lot of discipline, and you can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Lots that's of how, study, lots of discipline, and lots of passion. And that's, that's what we see in your eyes. And uh, sort of wonder, you know, um, where does it come from? Uh, one thing we do expect from, from you uh, at Langfest is to be, you know, an inspiration to other youngsters. Uh, hopefully, you know, uh, at Langfest and even beyond Langfest, uh, once your, your, your presentation gets on our, uh, on our Langfest, uh, channel on YouTube, uh, you know, these things, they spread and then, and then people see your message and then they get inspired uh, and that, that, that enthusiasm and that passion of yours just gets spread. And, and that's really what we're expecting. Uh, but even before that, we want to know. How, how did how did you catch the language bug? I mean, how how did you get infected? <laughs> um, it's hard it's hard to detect like an actual moment. I mean, I've been I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by culture like my entire life. Um, my grandmother she was half Italian, and I remember she loved to make the uh, meatballs for us, and uh, in my in on the Polish side, right, and some other foods like pierogies, raviolis was another favorite of my grandmother. So I've been lucky to have that, uh, that culture around me for my entire life. Um, but then I think it was really when I first started taking uh, my first French class in seventh grade, it really struck me that I could have conversations with other people within their for own uh, native language. And I think part of it was like, oh, like nobody else will know what I'm talking about. Um, but then from there, it grew into an actual love and appreciation of different cultures and different people. And, uh, and one thing that definitely helped as well is even though there's not a huge uh, friend in New York, um, there are a lot of immigrants. And I was able to, uh, I was fortunate enough, lucky enough to meet a lot of uh, Hispanic uh, immigrants that came to my high school. Um, so that's how I took up Spanish. And 
my main motivation was being able to speak with them, being able to talk with them. Um, and one thing that I could also bring into my presentation as well is that even if we were doing something dry in my Spanish class, maybe it was the subjunctive tense or maybe the imperfect, I will challenge myself to use that at least a set amount of times in my conversations. Okay, I'm going to use this grammar point five times when I speak to uh, speak to my friends today. And I would try and meet that goal and I would drill it down. And I believe that through that practice, it just became drilled in my head more than uh, so, more than any conjugation chart will. So, so, so what, what do your friends think of that? <laughs> do um, they go, well, wow, well, that's so cool. Or do yeah. they like, oh, you geek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice because what I would do is I could structure conversations about it. I would start. Maybe I'd ask them, like, how was your childhood in, say, the Dominican Republic? And they would talk about that. And so then I would be able to hear it and hear the, uh, say, the imperfect tense being used over and over and over again. And then I would ask for me, then I would be able to practice that and put it back, conjugate them to different verbs uh, in certain ways. And then that really solidified my understanding of that, that certain times. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. You, you, you keep on talking like that, and you're going to make a lot of friends at Langfest. <laughs> I don't know how it is back, back home. I don't know how many allies you have uh, around you. Uh, I mean, kids of your age, uh, whether you know you have a few friends who, who really share this passion with you, but uh, you're going to find a lot of us you know, at, uh, at Langfest in Montreal, that's for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, late fest. I just I can't wait for it. It's gonna be fantastic. Just meeting all these sorts of different people and what and uh, meeting different people that have an academic background, maybe a linguistics degree, or maybe they're linguistic professors and meeting them, oh, being yeah. able to talk to them. Um, and then just talk with independent language learners and get to hear their story and what their challenges are and how they've overcome those. Um, it should well, be a really fun and inspiring time for me as well. Well, we started off as a, a really uh, polyglot event, you know, folks who, who love to just, you know, learn a lot of languages uh, in our first year. But then we, we sort of, op you know, opened up our scope to, you know, pretty much everything or anything that has something to do with languages, whether it's language learning or, or professions in languages, you know, like translators, interpreters. Uh, and we've gone, you know, as far as actors, uh, you know, comedians, um, language and, creation this year and this year it's yeah. language creation uh, language and health and, and you know uh, so so it's it, we try to you know make it interesting and be able to cater to uh, not you know to to polyglots and non polyglots uh, experts and non experts you know folks who are just learning their second language I and mean, who are struggling and they should come and, and, and feel at home you know in, at a uh, at our event, so uh, so yeah, it's gonna it's it's a lot of fun. You get it's 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 really a place where you get to meet a lot of people and be inspired by some of these amazing uh, language experts. And also at the same time, you can inspire others uh, and, and and encourage the folks who are just starting off and and be their friend and be their support. So that's the kind of party that we're uh, we're planning. Mm -hmm. Already, and, okay. And so, so James, you're 16. You know what? What's what's in the you know the big scheme of things? Uh, you you talked a little bit about uh, you know law. Uh, I think you you also said you you're not uh, able to choose between you know academics, you know pure academics or you know more applied, uh, but. You, you do see something, right, in the next year, or next two, three years. What kind of projects do you have in your, your, your you know, project with the professor? Where is that going to take you? Uh, what's in yeah, the works? I think so. so my main goal right now, obviously, the, for, my, uh, for my, my immediate goal is to, uh, is to, finish, up that, to finish up that paper. We're going to be doing the actual study in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing our literature right, review right now. I'm getting some really good ideas because most of the time in research papers, at the end, authors will put, for example, this is something that still needs to be explored, or this is something that needs further research. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking in my mind, how can we further research this? How can we um, 
expand upon this topic that's already been that's been explored. So I'm getting some good ideas right now. Um, one thing I definitely want to do possibly in the future is uh, write a research article with my aunt. Um, that'll be, I think that would be a really fun experience and, uh, nice. and a great opportunity to learn more uh, together about different languages and, uh, and how they're applied. Um, another goal for me in the future is possibly writing a uh, research paper in another language, so say French or Spanish. All right. Uh, that would be really cool as a non-native speaker of one of those languages to come in and uh, write an article, now, not only to show my mastery of the language, but see how different peoples learn different languages differently. Do you also have some uh, travel plans? Um, right now, uh, I'm hoping next summer we can go somewhere, uh, maybe possibly Europe abroad. I've never actually been abroad. I've never been to Europe. Um, I have been to Canada. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Canada, Canada is not abroad, is it? <laughs> but, but Toronto is Toronto is a very beautiful city. Yeah. I love Toronto. Um, so I think that's right now uh, what I have in store. Uh, just once again, just speaking and talking with people, getting my language levels up for Lang class. Or possibly even C2 for all my languages. I'm sure yeah. you're going to be inspired by many and you're going to have new ideas uh, and, and, you know, maybe even have something concrete, you know, get, get, you know, triggered at Langfest. And, uh, you know, we wish you the best. Look forward mm -hmm. to seeing you. Yeah. And I also look forward to seeing your, your, your aunt, your enthusiastic aunt Jennifer. <laughs> uh, um, uh, through our exchanges, uh, I'm sure she's a, she's a lot of fun and a, very warm and, and, and happy person. So I really look forward to seeing her too. She's watching. Hello, Aunt Jennifer. Yeah, she knows it. <laughs> and, and to all your family members, uh, she said she was, she's, she's reached out to every single one of your, uh, your, your, your relatives. So it's likely everybody's watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a big, big home base in Syracuse, New York. We got a lot of <laughs> big, family. big family. Fantastic. All right. So, it's going to be a wrap for us this week. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, uh, once again, this year, Langfest will be at Université de Montréal. And uh, the tickets are uh, selling. And uh, we want to remind everybody that it's being sold in batches. And every batch of 50 tickets that gets sold, the, t the ticket price uh, increases by $20. Uh, so definitely go out and, and pick, pick up your, your ticket as soon as possible. We have two amazing keynote speakers this year. It's a very special event uh, where we have David J. Peterson, who has uh, created the language for uh, the Game of Thrones and Stothraki, and also High Valerian and all, all yeah, other languages. Two languages yeah. created, yeah. And uh, also we have uh, Mark Okren, uh, and who has created the, the language Klingon for the Star Trek uh, franchise. So this is, I mean, just having one of, of, of these two would be an amazing thing. And uh, yeah. we, we, we were able to secure yeah. both of them. But no, uh, exactly. Yeah, and we're going to have, both of, them. We're gonna have <laughs> both of them on stage at the same time doing something that we don't even know yet. I mean, we, <laughs> this is going to be just you know, a, a great surprise. And they're also giving uh, a workshop on each of their respective languages over the weekend also. So check mm -hmm. it out. Check out our program. The whole thing is on our website at langfest.org uh, and the tickets are also there uh, and uh, otherwise any other messages? No, merci tout le monde et merci à toi. Parfait, parfait. So, même heure, même poste la semaine prochaine et on souhaite euh, une bonne fin de semaine à tout le monde, un bon week-end comme on dirait en France. Salut! See you guys! Au revoir. Uh, Bye -bye. Adios. <laughs>